Hello everyone, it's Niven, and welcome to episode 4 of Behind the Scenes of Game Development, a weekly series where I talk about my own projects, I review them, and I show you behind the scenes footage of how those games are made. Episode 1, 2, and 3 are available on my channel, you can check them out. And today, episode 4 is dedicated to Shand, which is an Egyptian horror experience with a twist. Shand was one of those breakthrough projects which I worked on for a long time. It took me three weeks to finish this game, as it is stated on my game's page. And with Shand, I wanted the player to experience a linear narrative, but then twist the story and make the player think about what really happened during their playthrough. And I've got one of the best reviews and feedback for this game. Lots of people were posting their own comments and their own ideas about what happened towards the end. And if you haven't played this game, then I warn you as a spoiler, I'm going to be talking about what truly happened. In Shunt, you are Sergeant Allen, who travels with his companion and the plane crashes, you're in Egypt, at Fu, and a bird kind of creature attacks you. And then you're trapped inside this tomb and you're trying to escape. But what really is happening is you're actually an SCP. SCP, for some of you who don't know, is one of those creepypasta corporations which secures, protects the assets of supernatural uh, nature. And uh, the SCP foundation is based on those creepypasta things around the world. And I kind of created my own SCP. It was mainly based on the other SCPs too, but I wanted it to be very special and that's why I made this game. Although I would say that Shunt was directly inspired from Supermassive's game, the Dark Pictures Anthology series called The House of Ashes. You should definitely check that game out. It's not free, of course, it's a AAA game, but when I... I did not play that game, but when I watched that game being played, I wanted to make something which had the desert environment, which had this conflict of a soldier and that twist ending towards the end. So that's how I made Shunt. Some of the issues I had with Shunt was probably the environment which I tried to make myself. I couldn't find any assets online. And this was the first game which I actually had the assets to get from a different source. Now let's go into details. As you can see from my folder, I have multiple assets for this game. I have the main project called Desert Project because I didn't have name for it. And uh, I have the blood splatter, the bloody overlay, the fire, a transparent texture, the old paper, the new paper, and all the other uh, type of types of assets. And this is the asset credits where I copy pasted all the assets and credited the authors which those assets were made by and yeah definitely this is it uh, the skyboxes were very complex to import in the game file that's why i had to choose only one skybox and uh, the one asset i had problems with was actually the spike trap which is an animation and i had to figure out how to put that animation inside the game and have the textures all applied and the puzzle working properly now this is the folder for my game and let's go to the project itself and welcome to behind the scenes of Shunt. This is it. This is the environment I created using Blender. Uh, this asset, which is a desert asset, and it's quite big. Uh, it is made, as I said, by me. It wasn't imported or created in the game engine. And uh, yeah, the basic 
title, control, screen, the exit and play button as I always do, the copyright and uh, yeah that's the skybox which I use by the way, the Egypt skybox and uh, that's the first scene. In this game I don't have as many scenes as I had in Sunken. As I said Sunken was one of the bigger games because it had multiple scenes. This one has basically six different acts, the seven act, seventh act being the final one and then the credits. So let's go to prologue. Oh. So the prologue has sound, I should delete it. So this is definitely not what you all expected to see, I assume. Let's put some light right here and uh, yeah, as you can see, this is just a desert and this is not even a plane, this is just a cockpit with the two soldiers, the one soldier who looks kind of like drunk and the other one which is Sergeant Allen which probably survived the crash. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. I have two types of textures. I have one texture which is applied on the cockpit let's say for the plane and the other one is actually the controls for the plane so yeah this doesn't look uh, that uh, impressive I would say and there is this camera which is the actor behind those two people who kind of sees all the action now I use the same technique as I use in a sentence with uh, shunned basically this cockpit is not moving, rather the environment around it is moving. As you can see the skybox, you can definitely see the skybox is moving and also the plane is kind of shaking a little bit but the actual airplane, the helicopter is not moving. But you have that sense in the game and the camera is located the way that you can actually see that it's moving but in real life it's not so that's it then we have act one which is a crash scene let me see if I can delete the sound effects the ambience yes I can delete that and I can delete the wind loop all right so now let's put some directional light in here and as you can see kind of uh, this is the same design we have this big stones those big pillars and we have uh, this structure which is some people complained about it being lazy but uh, well it's just one structure which is copy pasted that's true but it is reminiscent of the Egyptian style stones which kind of were all the same so you would expect the game to be kind of like it and then we have two cars like this uh, we have this tent where we have all the information and when you click on the plane the texture which is right here is becoming visible invisible visible that's how it works guys that's how game development works and then you have by the way an antagonist a falcon man which is right here he's right here he's just waiting for us and he's about to strike us and as you can see I can put some light on him uh, this is the Falcon Man this is the asset which I actually found and it wasn't credited the reason why I don't have the direct link for the asset but if you are curious to getting this asset for free you can ask me in the comment section and I'll definitely uh, contact you with discord or maybe email and give you the asset it's it's a brilliant asset and it has all the materials so it can be used in many creepy games anyways then we have uh, the inside of this pillars and we have poor surgeon which was with us as you can see the surgeon some people complained again about the texture well the texture is actually very different from the person because all the materials for the person are actually separate basically the skull there are two skulls right here as you can see two different skulls we have uh hold on where is this we have a skeleton rib 
which is also separate if I can move or rotate it yeah and we have this guy which is also separate hold on hold on yep it's separate from all those things so right here we have guts we have uh, the rib cage and all this are separate so that's it that's the behind the scenes and we have two planes two multiple planes right here no actually three planes right oh no four <laughs> I didn't even know I had four planes yeah so one two three and uh, fourth is right here it just went right here anyways uh, that's the other level now let's go to act two act two is the tomb and as I talked in the video about the spikes these are the spikes right here they're actually below the actual construction I designed it this way because the spikes would come up and then the actual ground would be invisible so the ground you know as you can see you cannot see spikes now but they come up and I have to actually time this and I had to actually test this many times so the player was able to walk not run but walk and kind of challenge themselves with the spikes and as you can, as you can see the spikes have uh, uh, multiple collisions on them so each spike has one collision which can kill the player we have multiple skeletons right here and then we have the door which is right here and behind that door right here behind this door is actually a part of the level which I made for the third act so this level is empty it's very creepy I know but this level is completely empty as you can see there is nothing in here when you open the door it triggers the collision system and then you go to scene number three same goes oh excuse me act number two uh, hold on a second act number three yeah same goes with this one you have this empty space right here this is the same map and then you have the puzzles and the puzzle is very simple actually I made a uh, an error which many players have guessed but many haven't uh, if you take all three of them and you put them right here for example or here or here it doesn't matter it will still activate this uh, door and it will open it and then the valve which is hidden right here will actually appear so definitely you can see there is a smoke particle system which is let's say poisoned and uh, yeah that's basically it you have the player you have the torches you have the sound attached to the torches and then we have level four which not many people liked uh, it was just a level with water and many people said that you were walking on the water you were not walking on the water you were walking in the water but your head was able to look up so you were not immersed all inside the water but rather the halfway then also you have those torches which help you to navigate through this level then we have the fifth level which is when we are introduced to the unk right here it, ha it has this uh, circular motion and uh, yeah that's basically it then you have the final confrontation with the mummies as you can see here are the mummies and not many people have seen but we also have the falcon man right here he goes around like this just flies around like a stupid guy yeah this looks very different from a developer's perspective I'm not complaining but there were some people who said that my games especially this one didn't have much effort which it actually did all those things do not appear by themselves you actually need to code and you actually need to apply the behaviors you have to apply and measure the distance and you have to do it all by yourself so it's not easy we have the credits as you can see 
and in the credits I have my name messed up. It's Hedinger, not Hedin. Okay, it's Hedinger, so it's messed up. I don't know why. Uh, and in Act 7, we have the twist ending where SCP logo shows up, and you kind of guess that you are the SCP. We have this doctor right here who talks about our problems, this uh, good-looking doctor with eyelashes, and yeah, that's it. That's the room. That's the final room. And uh, basically, that's the game, yeah. And let's play Shunt. We have the controls. I know the controls, and let's play. And here. This is what I'm talking about. You see, you feel like the plane is moving, but it's actually not. So let's click all this um, text, and we crash. So we just go straight towards the collision, which I know is right there. And, uh, yep, that's it. We go towards here. We see poor lieutenant, and then we go back. It's kind of weird to play my own games because I know what's gonna happen. And then we have this bird punching us. And right here, many people uh, were talking about, you know, I cannot open it. The lock is... Uh, cannot be open so you take all those stones actually only this stone has the opener let's see the collision and those stones don't really matter uh, then we have this level and right here we can go easily yep and we have this text and go and go that's it I know I'm pro at this, right? I'm so great at playing my own games. I'm such an amazing person. Thank you very much. Now, some of you might say, oh, why doesn't it have the sound effects? Because as, I'm, uh, as I told before in previous episodes, uh, when I move the folder for the games in uh, different uh, places, the sounds disappear. So that's why. Now we click this one. And uh, we go right here, apply this, crank, twist it, and then we press this one. And now I know, here are the flames, yep. Now I have to go through this hallway, hallway of blood. Well, I'm gonna skip that. Yep, now we escape here, and that's it, that's it. And we go. Now we grab this on right here. This might come in handy, yeah, definitely. And now we fight the mummies. Some people said, is there a possibility that the mummies can kill you? Yes, it is. So if you let them attack you, right, they will actually kill you and the level will restart. So there is yeah, see? But you can always kill them! Woo! Kill the guy! Kill the guy! Kill the guy! Kill the guy! Yup, and that's it! That's the ending of Shand. So the doctor talks to us, we click blah 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 blah, and that's the end. That's the exit. In conclusion, Shunt was a fun project to work on. It definitely had potential to be bigger, it definitely had potential to be better, but somehow along the way we make mistakes, and somehow the game development is a bit of a pressure, especially from the people who expect your games to be very, very good. And I wanted to underline this message in a good way that sometimes when you make a certain game and that game becomes a pretty good sensation for some people, then you have the pressure to make a better game. And every time you evolve and you're trying to give something new to people, and not only because they suggest some things to be improved in the game, some things to be added in the game, but also because you feel like you cannot do a misstep, you cannot downgrade your game. The reason why 
my two new projects which were not that successful had the issue and the reason why I felt a bit pressure but uh, I guess it's fine you know it's it, what game development is it is what I like the most about game development because if those things were easy if things like game development and music creation and asset creation and being an artist was great then every single person could have done it but it's not you know some people do it majority people do it greatly but not all people do it and that's it for episode 4 which was shunned now the next episode as you know will be coming out next week because this behind the scenes of development is a weekly series and I might talk about Unhinged and Mason because I made those games together or I might make a bigger video showcasing the rest of my games. Maybe I can talk about my first game which I co-created with my partner which who left me excuse me and um, maybe I can talk about Envy, Red Mist, Azimuth, maybe I can talk about all of them and showcase some of those games. Especially I might make a video, an episode about Opacity which is uh, kind of a two series game. This is Opacity and Opacity 2 which is the uh, prequel to Opacity and in the future I said that on my channel that I might make Opacity 3, which will be the final one. I don't know, we'll see. Those two games were also made with Blender Game Engine, so the new Copper Cube 6 engine actually gives me more free space to make a great game, and it has more potential, of course. Thanks everyone for watching, I truly appreciate your support. If you enjoyed this, if you learned something from this, uh, definitely give me something to talk about and definitely comments and maybe you have a question which I haven't answered so please feel free thanks once again everyone for watching and have an amazing day goodbye